This is what I call the stoichiometry island diagram. I put this together in my second year of teaching because I was having difficulty conveying to my students in any other way how we do stoichiometry problems. This diagram looks very complicated, but once you understand it, it's really not so bad. Basically, the left and right are mirror images of one another. If you know the left side, you know the right side. On the left here, we have mass, volume, and here I'm specifically referring to volume of gases at standard temperature and pressure, and then particles, which chemical particles typically atoms or molecules. And I put them in that order because mass starts with M, volume starts with V, and particle starts with P, MVP, and that's a fairly easy acronym for many people to remember. Most valuable player, mass volume particles. And then on the far right, we also have mass volume particles. Basic unit for amount of substance in the SI system is the mole. We learned in a previous lesson how to convert between mass of some substance and moles, or mass of some substance and atoms of that substance. Well, now we're going to convert between amounts of two substances. One amount is given, one substance amount is given, and we're asked to calculate another amount. To do that, we need to start on the left side of this diagram, which is why it says here at the bottom, substance A, that's the known substance, and then substance B is the amount that we're asked to calculate. To get from one side to the other, you can see here in the middle, we have to use the coefficients from the balanced equation. Let's try a couple of examples. Here we're going to go through what I call straight stoichiometry, and what that means is that the quantity of only one substance is given, and if we have any gases, the conditions are standard temperature and pressure. So here we go. How many moles of oxygen will react with 16.8 moles of sodium? The first thing we need to decide here is which substance is the known amount, which substance is known, and which substance is the one we're asked to f calculate some information about. Sodium, we know how many moles, 16.8 moles of sodium, and we're asked to calculate how many moles of oxygen in our little island diagram model. The substance that we know the amount for is on the left, and the substance that we are going to calculate an amount for is on the right. And that means that since we're starting at 16.8 moles of sodium, and we're going to moles of oxygen, this calculation is going to take one conversion factor, because we only have one bridge to cross. So let's do that. 16.8 moles of sodium, that's the number we're given. We're going to need one conversion factor. But whenever we cross this middle bridge, we have to use the coefficients from the balanced equation. So we need to write a balanced equation. Here it is, sodium reacting with oxygen. The only real option there is for that to be a synthesis reaction, which means the product will be Na2O. And if we balance that, we'll get a balanced equation that looks like that. Then. To cross this middle bridge, we're going to use the coefficients from that balanced equation. So where it says moles of sodium here, I want that unit to cancel. So I'm going to have moles of sodium in the denominator with a 4 in front of it, because that 4 coefficient is what's in front of Na in the equation. Then we're calculating moles of oxygen. So the coefficient in front of the oxygen is understood to be 1. Notice that the coefficient in front of the sodium oxide, we're not going to use that in this problem. Moles of Na cancel. 16.8 divided by 4, 4.2 moles of oxygen. Let's try a little bit tougher example. How many grams of potassium react with 465 grams of nickel 2 phosphate? Again, on our island diagram, the four islands on the left represent the substance that we know the amount of. The four islands on the right represent the substance that we're asked to calculate about. And since it says how many grams of potassium, that must mean that the four islands on the right represent potassium, and 
the four islands on the left represent nickel 2 phosphide. We're starting at grams of nickel 2 phosphide. And remember, the islands go mass, volume, particles. And since we have grams of nickel 2 phosphide, we're starting in the upper left corner. And where are we going to end up? Well, we're going to end up at grams of potassium. Now, which island is that? That would be the one in the upper right. Because this triangle would be moles of potassium. This lower right island would be atoms of potassium. So we want to end up in the upper right. So our path is going to look like that. Which means we're going to need three conversion factors to solve this problem. Because we're crossing three bridges. Potassium has the chemical symbol K. Let's find the formula for nickel 2 phosphide. The formula for nickel 2 ion is Ni2 plus. The phosphide ion, you can convince yourself from the periodic table that phosphorus takes a 3 minus charge when it turns into the phosphide ion. So nickel 2 phosphide is going to have that formula. These two things are going to react with each other. Let's set up our problem. There's the amount of nickel 2 phosphide that we're given. We've already determined that we're going to have to cross three bridges, so I'm going to put three conversion factors in there. The first conversion factor is going to relate one mole of Ni3P2 with the molar mass of Ni3P2. Notice that I've put the grams in the denominator so that they will, whoosh, whoosh, like that, cancel. Feel free to get out your calculator and your periodic table and verify that if you take three nickels and two phosphorus, you're going to get a molar mass of 238 point. Okay, so we've crossed that first bridge here in the upper right, and now it's time to cross the middle bridge from moles of nickel 2 phosphide to moles of potassium. Now to cross that bridge, we need the coefficients from the balanced equation. We don't have a balanced equation, so we need to set one up. Potassium, we're told in the problem, is going to react with nickel 2 phosphide. Hopefully you've had a little bit of experience with chemistry and you recognize that this is going to end up being a single replacement reaction where potassium metal is going to replace the nickel. Nickel is going to end up by itself at the end and the potassium and the phosphorus will get together in a 3 to 1 ratio. Now we need to balance this equation by putting a 2 there. That'll give us two phosphorus atoms on each side. Then we have six potassiums and three nickels. Okay, we did all that work so that we could find the coefficients in the balanced equation between nickel 2 phosphide and potassium. One nickel 2 phosphide for six potassiums. Again, we've oriented those moles not randomly, but such that the moles of nickel 2 phosphide will cancel. And then we need to cross the last bridge, which involves moles of potassium compared to the molar mass of potassium. And from the periodic table, one mole of potassium is 39.1 grams. We simply then type this into our calculator, 465 divided by 238.1 times 6 times 39.1, 458 grams.